Good evening guys, this is Brandon and today I will be presenting on Lactate Threshold. It's a, kind of a unique topic, we haven't talked about it much in class, but I'll go over a few things uh, from my review paper and then a, another manuscript from the literature and the protocol for testing. Okay guys, so I'm going to go over a little bit of uh, history, give a background of the uh, lactate threshold and um, some of the people that played a big part in, in its upcoming. Uh, first guy I want to mention is Bersalius. He's a Swedish chemist who uh, is considered one of the fathers of modern chemistry. And what he did was he found that while he was hunting, and um, stags would run away from him after they, he'd shot them with a bow. He'd found this uh, compound in their muscles. So he looked at it and he um, analyzed a little bit and he decided to call it uh, L lactate. Okay, so the next guy that I want to mention is Will Hedinger. And um, he's a uh, German physiologist who first kind of had the idea of lactate and lactic acid in muscles. Um, and the main thing he did was he pretty much presented his research at a conference in Chicago in 1954 um, to kind of get other physiologists interested in this and kind of uh, start up the process of learning more about it. Um, in 1959, the first lactate pipe paper was published, and as of today, in you know December of 11, we have over 2,500 publications on lactate threshold, and these are in you know um, performance and diseases. So we've got a wide range of things to look at. Okay, so an important question is why is lactate important? So we know it's acidic, we know it's in our muscles, um, you may feel lactic acid building up when you're uh, on the bicycle ergometer or maybe running um, at a fast pace, you can feel the burn in your legs, that's lactic acid building up in the muscles. Um, and what, this, what I have here is the Cori cycle, um, you may be familiar with this from basic biochemistry or uh, metabolism class. So while we have this buildup and usage of ATP um, during exercise, have an accumulation of hydrogen ions, uh, pyruvic acid puts these off onto lactic acid, they go through the blood to the liver cells and they get turned um, back into ATP. So that's just a very brief overview, but um, for this presentation, that's basically all you need to know. Okay, so some really important terms um, with lactate threshold. Lactic acid, lactate, you hear all, all these different terms. Um, one of the three most important terms are, the first one is aerobic threshold, which is the limit at which um, your aerobic metabolism can no longer keep up with your energy output. So say you're walking along um, a track and you start to jog. So when your normal fat oxidation can't keep up with the energy you're acquiring, this is when lactic acid starts to accumulate. Um, next term is the MLSS. You'll see this a lot in the literature. Um, this is the maximal lactic st steady state. Um, and this is the most uh, work you can do without building uh, lactate in your muscles. Um, and this is also, uh, a lot of people call this the anaerobic threshold. So when you get beyond this point is when you start really building up acid in your muscles. Okay, so if you take a look at this curve, this is the basic uh, blood lactate concentration versus work intensity curve. 
um, and you can see that as you transition upwards you hit your aerobic threshold which I just talked about um, and the millimoles per liter of blood on the y-axis isn't true for everyone but this is a good example to look at uh, so uh, as you transition into your anaerobic um, phase you start going up and then you can see the arrow pointing to the MLSS and this is right before the lactic acid buildup get, becomes exponential okay so you can see a steep increase um, this is also really close to your VO2 max and it may be the, the VO2 max in some people um, but they like to pair these tests when they do them in labs and for uh, performance assessment okay so you've heard lactic acid lactate same thing right well not exactly so blood lactate is what they measure in the blood alright so makes sense but as you previously saw on that axis um, it's blood lactate per millimole so at rest most people have around a one millimole per liter um, the anaerobic pathways begin at two millimoles two to three I would say um, and then for non elite athletes the anaerobic threshold is around four to six there are some extreme cases where some cyclists go up to like eight or nine uh, I think uh, Lance Armstrong was in the like seven ish range but uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later okay so how do you find your lactate threshold? Well, it's not that hard, but it does involve a little blood. So what we do is, depending on what sport you want to look at, you can do it on treadmill, uh, bicycle, um, a rowing machine, and you do a um, inc incremental test to where you up the intensity depending on um, which test you're using uh, up the workload every minute or 30 seconds or um, it varies but uh, you increase it as you go up okay so while you're doing this you have a a blood draw which is usually a finger prick which is easy to do when you cycle um, earlobe is a little trickier um, and the toe prick is mainly used for rowing because you're not actually moving your feet that much um, and it's just really quick it takes like 10 or 15 seconds max just a little like an insulin uh, blood check would be for people with diabetes okay and then you collect this blood into um, you know little Eppendorf tubes and they sell kits to analyze it and then to find your lactate threshold threshold you can make a line with uh, linear regression and you can usually just almost pick out this point because it, it's usually obvious we'll see I guess I guess it didn't play um, but so looking at feeling the burn like I was talking about earlier um, one thing I just want to point out quickly is that you hear a lot about um, coaches and some trainers um, say that you know you have a big workout uh, resistant exercise you build a lot of lactic acid and then or you play a sport even and the next day you feel you you know you, you feel uh, like your muscles are tight and they're, they're sore um, a lot of people attribute this to lactic acid buildup well actually that's not quite the case that's um, a different story but lactic acid clears the blood in a matter of hours um, I, I believe I saw two or three hours max so what you're actually feeling when you feel the soreness or DOMS or anything like that is the muscle fibers the myosin and actin torn literally torn and um, healing itself 